Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a video and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Today it is my privilege to welcome a dear friend from Taiwan, Royce Hong. Royce, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashish. Royce, in his own words, is a designer by training, entrepreneur by circumstance and a car enthusiast by obsession. Royce is the chairman of Panasonic Taiwan. He is the CEO and big head design at IPVO and he is the CEO and founder of Zing Mobility. Royce, what do you what would you say are three key milestones in your life or career? Yes, three key milestones. This is uh actually when you when I read through the question I was like uh, really thought hard about this. Mm-hmm. I think when I was the first milestone is uh, happened when I was in college. Okay. When I was a uh, when I was in high school, I was actually quite a delinquent student. Mm-hmm. I have a nickname from teachers. They call me the Phantom Student because I'm cutting class. You know, I was never in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, hanging out with a bunch of friends. You know, causing a lot of trouble. But then when I went to college, actually, I I because I'm sort of um, a passion for design, so mm-hmm. I uh, enrolled in uh, Royal Island School of Design, which is okay. doing something I love. But even when I got to college, you know, being on living on by myself uh, without parents' guidance, I was having a great time partying with friends and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Not much, doing not not concentrating on my work. Mm-hmm. But that first big milestone was actually that uh, one night I think during my sophomore year, second mm-hmm. year in college, mm-hmm. I received a call from my mother telling me that my father is at the terminal uh, stage of cancer. Oh God! So that actually, you know, it shook me, and mm-hmm. that I think that that also like changed me mm-hmm. in terms of uh, from a delinquent student to uh, what the people call me now as a workaholic. Okay. I mean, I, I sort of realized like I need to, you know, get my act together and mm-hmm. really, really work my ass off to to achieve things. So that changed my attitude totally. The second milestone was starting my first company, mm-hmm. sort of quitting my job as a creative director at a prominent internet uh, startup in mm-hmm. Taiwan, uh, sort of like Amazon of Taiwan, okay. uh, called PC Home. And then quitting that job and then starting up a new company with, with three other friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's something, it's a big leap. I, Knowing nothing about running company and management, I was, you know, a designer back then. Right. Knowing all, all kinds of stuff that I would get myself into, I, I probably wouldn't do it. But, you know, being um, sort of a <laughs> beginner's luck, uh, right. you know, it, it started my entrepreneurship journey. Okay. Yeah. And the third milestone is actually dealing with, uh, is actually dealing with uh, YPO. Okay. Where you and I met. Yeah is when I decided to take on the learning officer role. I educated to plan a whole year's program for yep. our local chapter mm. and really, really got, you know, dived in and planned a program called Paradigm Shift and then planned 18 events mm-hmm. that's sort of mutually cohesive. And okay. I'll tell you the whole story. And that, that, that year actually, you know, Learn a lot from uh, peer leadership and mm-hmm. learning about how to how to how to lead a, how to lead a whole whole chapter of a uh, group of uh, peer leaders, and that's something that uh, I was very proud of. And that 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 year, actually, the program actually won uh, international best of the best from YPO. Wow! So that's uh, quite an accomplishment, and like actually, it boosted me to you know believe that you know I can. Uh, accomplish a lot of things. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, you know, before I can get into uh, your technology businesses, right. I want to talk about Panasonic. I know you yeah. were telling me that, you know, this is a family business in Taiwan, if I can use that. Yeah. Uh, and you are the current chairman. Tell me about the journey that your family went through when they took on the Panasonic franchise in Taiwan. Wow. So it's a it's a family business, but it's also a joint venture with Panasonic yeah. in Japan. I think uh, started more than sixty years ago. Wow. My grandfather, my my great grandfather was a miner, so not not a 
works in a mine, so not an even businessman. My grandfather was that was actually before World War Two ended, uh, right after the war, I think. He became uh, trading, you know, electronic parts and supplies. He goes to China, uh, Shanghai to buy uh, electrical parts and wires and light bulbs, and brings it back to Taiwan to sell them. A little, you know, and then and then and builds assembles radios. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, when uh, I think the the National uh, Civil War in China broke out, uh, the Nationalist Party retreated to Taiwan. He couldn't go to Shanghai to get parts anymore, so he had to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. And then at that time, he, he realized that uh, there's a company called Matsushita. It wasn't called Panasonic back yep. then. Mm -hmm. So in 1962, when mm -hmm. the Taiwanese government was trying to uh, have a lot of incentive to uh, kickstart the manufacturing industry in Taiwan, mm -hmm. my grandfather. Uh, went to Japan and uh, sat down with uh, Mr. Matsushita mm -hmm. and then signed a deal of uh, bringing the manufacturing uh, and sales distributor oh. uh, to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. 62. And that was uh, one of the very early companies to kickstart the uh, you know, consumer product, electronics uh, manufacturing in Taiwan. Wow. But, uh, Purpose of uh, you know bringing the technology, manufacturing technology from Japan to Taiwan. So that was uh, that's how it started. And the company right now it's fifty eight years. Mm -hmm. So uh, the company was uh, part of my grandfather passed off to my father, mm -hmm. and after he passed, um, my uncle took over, who was also a YPO member, mm -hmm. and. I think uh, five five years ago he uh, decided to retire, and when he retired, he just clean cut retirement. He's like, Amazing. I'm not I'm not even staying on the board to help you, boys. Okay. You okay. So uh, long story short, Panasonic Taiwan right now, although it's a subsidiary, uh, uh, majority is owned by the Japanese. By the way, mm -hmm. uh, we're in Taiwan for fifty eight years, yeah, and very much a localized company. Top leaderships are, are Taiwanese, mm -hmm. and we own we have the largest market share of the home appliance market in Taiwan, mm -hmm. twenty two yeah. around twenty two percent. Okay, and uh, also um, now being the world and sort of COVID lockdown, mm -hmm. Taiwan being the one of the only freer countries, we this year I think we are recording top sales figures for yeah. around the world and, uh, as a country. As wow, a, even with yeah, so I mean, we're, we're, we're doing quite well. We're, we're quite happy about our progress. Yeah. Terrific. So, you know, so now let's shift gears and come to your passion as a designer, as a technology entrepreneur. I've visited your office in Taipei and the amount of work that you're doing in, in, in both your new companies, IPO <laughs> and Singen, I mean, I shouldn't say new, you know, they're, they're, I believe they're both ready to get into much larger play in the market. Tell me about both these companies. Okay, I'll try to, I'll try to make it short and brief. Yep. I can go on for hours, yep. and, uh, as you know. Yep. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll start with IPVO first. Okay. So IPVO is a company started in uh, 14 years ago. Okay. Uh, we idea came about in 2006, we found the company in 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, we started out as a you know, we, we saw the opportunity of uh, internet services and applications going out of the need of the, the, the laptop and the computer itself. Right. So our first part of it is, uh, is a Skype phone, the Skype handset. Yeah, yep, yep. I remember buying those. Yeah. So we were the first company to, to make it. And mm -hmm. I, being a designer, I thought uh, it's a great opportunity for a new breed of devices that takes internet services that's probably invisible to make it become visible, becoming a, a tool. And the tool actually defines the behavior. Right. So from there, we, we, we started to build a host of Skype devices uh, from Skype handsets to speaker phones. And then we move into video communication. Mm -hmm. And we really, I realized that the behavior is not just seeing talking heads during video calls like what mm -hmm. we're doing now, but also Another thing called see what I see. I want the other person at the end of the line to see uh, what yeah. I want them to see. 
So, I mean, a quick example is that I, when I travel abroad, when I call home uh, using Zoom or Skype, I talk to my wife for uh, five minutes, but I also wanted to see my our dog, yep. who is uh, a chubby bulldog, English mm. bulldog. So, awkward position, she has to hold a computer up to mm. one. Mm. So, so, we realize there's a camera need of a sort of a pointing device that mm. shows, articulating on shows see what I see right and the product uh, sort of got caught on by education educators in the US that they may use a product uh, to showcase this curriculum uh, demo uh, uh, life uh, um, sort of curriculum and it became such a popular tool that, and it's also very reasonably priced and uh, nicely designed Mm -hmm. that uh, IP World products are now in about 60, more than 60% of uh, K-12 schools in America. Wow. Wow. And, yeah. and that was last year. This mm -hmm. year, when COVID hit, distant learning become, becomes a norm. Mm -hmm. um, document cameras as a product, main product, it went from a nice to have to a must have. Mm -hmm. So our sales uh, more than doubled. Uh, this year, and a host of new devices and new solutions are coming out. So I think uh, the mission of the company currently becoming that uh, COVID has made the world a very disconnected, divided place. And our mission is to to make tools for a connected world to reconnect people. And that's IP Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, to line up technology in Taiwan, and then work making it designing products for, for communication. Amazing. Mm. Yeah. And Zing Mobility is, is something that I would not imagine me doing uh, mm -hmm. 10 years ago. It's, uh, I think, cause has been my passion, as you know. I, mean, yep. I, I can see from the picture behind yeah. you. Yes, thank you. And if you, if you talk to my wife, he's, she will say that um, it's, not, it's not a passion, it's, it's an addiction. It's mm -hmm. like a, okay. Uh, it's it's this is what I love, and uh, but I never imagined you know having a computing in my own car or having a car company mm -hmm. until 2013 when I met uh, this guy. Who, who I was at a TED talk in mm -hmm. Taiwan. I was a speaker. Mm -hmm. The guy coming up, a speaker behind after me was uh, a ZZ Tucker, okay. an engineer from Tesla, okay. who actually decided to stay in Taiwan for. Um, for to develop a lot of advanced uh, EV engineering uh, mm -hmm. technology. So we met, we became good friends. So we founded this company called Z Mobility at first, is to build electric race cars. Mm -hmm. And as busy being uh, sort of responsible for supplier development in Asia Pacific, he knows mm -hmm. that Taiwan has a great sort of supply chain. Yeah. So we found a company, we built a couple of cars, uh, one of them a very fast 1,341 horsepower mm. supercar wow. with four motors, which is the, that's the prototype wow. the mule that you see behind mm -hmm. me. But from that, we developed a battery technology with a very sort of out of the box immersion cooling, a modular system mm. that was actually, we thought it was perfect for um, construction, agriculture, and mining vehicle applications. Right. right. And especially vehicle applications. So we, we made that into the product and coupled it with the uh, motors and controllers and mm -hmm. really the entire powertrain. And mm -hmm. that's supplying to the other EVs of the world, the, mm -hmm. the workhorses, the construction vehicles, mm -hmm. the mining vehicles, the, the workhorses that make the world go around. And mm. I think they actually have more need to go electric than Tesla's and passenger vehicles. Right. And, and you also have uh, some proprietary technology for storage cells, isn't it? Which you have been de you have developed uh, to cool the cells. To cool the cells, okay. <laughs> to, uh, to for heat management, mm. it's actually quite. Uh, it's a crazy, crazy technology. It's uh, we to to manage the. The temperature of the cells, we actually dip the battery cell in the coolant. Uh -huh. And that liquid is uh, dielectric, of course, and it puts uh -huh. through the system. Uh, we have patented in the US and Korea, Taiwan, 
It's patent pending in Europe. Hmm. I think we'll apply for patent in India as well. Okay. Okay. Very okay. interesting. So let, let me let me talk to you about a little bit about Taiwan. I mean, you know, ever since I was young, you know, you mentioned that your dad had or your granddad had gone and started getting things, you know, the assembling transistors or radios. And I know when I was very young, we used to get Taiwanese made transistor radios here. Mm -hmm. And we've always seen Taiwan coming up with such incredible technology. There's so much innovation in Taiwan. What is it that is so special in Taiwan that encourages so much entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial skills and so much technology? Well, I think a couple of factors, but this is like, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not an expert in this field, no, but yeah. from my personal point of view, mm -hmm. one is that there was, a, I think from the 60s and the 70s, there's a mm -hmm. big government approach okay. in terms of the uh, uh, electronic industry, a big focus, building the, the Shinju Science Park, you know, all these semiconductors and yeah. uh, electronics uh, industry, they're, they're, all, they're all based. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's one of the factors that uh, the government incentives and making this happen. And active in the stock market. Secondly, I think there's a link up between um, either the si uh, Silicon Valley mm. and uh, likes of the Intel and, and Taiwan. Mm. So there's sort of a manufacturing supply chain that's aided by the US-Taiwan relationship. Okay. And thirdly, because of the incentive and because where you, where you see this um, sort of industry booming, there are also schools, universities, pumping out top engineering students. Okay. So the engineering talent, electrical engineering, uh, more electrical engineering actually, okay. was, um, is actually a big forte in Taiwan. So Taiwan has um, every year the university, from uh, National Taiwan University, uh, Jiao Tong University, and uh, Tsinghua University. These three schools are, uh, are top notch, and so so I think that's that's the reason why um, there's a continuous sort of trend of technology companies. And so the top, actually, you know, the top university sort of majors that uh, for all, all, almost a big majority of parents in Taiwan for their mm -hmm. kids studying is electrical engineering in these in these three and three universities. Okay. And then maybe it's more computer science, but E was the, was the top choice. Amazing. Yeah. So uh, let me move to the next question. You know, and this, I've got some uh, time for a you know, few questions for you personally now. Sure. You know, so much success and so much more ahead. So many things that you keep doing, pursuing your passion or your addiction, as your wife says. What does success mean to you? Ooh, success mean to me. Actually, I read something on my friend's uh, Twitter that was mm -hmm. actually is uh, is something like if your father were alive today, mm -hmm. will you be proud of him, and will he be proud of what you're doing? Wow, that is so. Yeah, I think I think that says a lot. I think that's what, and for me, it's actually. My grandfa grandmother passed five years ago, six years ago, and she was uh, 95, 96. Mm -hmm. So I think one of our goals in life is to, to make her proud. Very interesting. My next question is that where do you, Royce, draw your inspiration from to keep doing so many new things one after another? I'm too greedy. Okay. <laughs> All these crazy ideas. Yeah. So um, inspiration. Uh, it came from a few things. One is that I think one one of the one of the top uh, sort of source of inspiration was actually I learned from YPO. Mm -hmm. It's that always learning. Is that every person I meet, uh, every uh, even a taxi driver or uh, anybody, uh, my 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 coach, my gym coach, mm -hmm. I try to learn something. From them. Okay. I would try to think about you know in, during this conversation, what's my take home takeaway. So this is one thing, and then usually there are quite a lot. Mm -hmm. If you really dive in to think about it, even with a, uh, maybe a bad experience with a, a crazy taxi driver, you learn something. Fair enough. 
And secondly, I think one of those is um, I love, also love uh, contemporary art mm -hmm. and sort of conceptual. Um, and so I think artists and even even uh, conceptual music, mm -hmm. avant-garde music, is that artists really think way beyond the current. They try; they are the, the best innovators. Okay. So ideas or concepts from them actually gets trickled down to to design to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that uh, I, I constantly look into. And also another inspiration is from my 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 daughter. Mm -hmm. So I uh, sort of you know surprised me a lot of times that to think about things. Fantastic. So your comment about your little daughter is the an interesting segue to my next question. Oh, wow. which is that if you were a role model to millions of children who closely followed you and your life choices, what is the one thing you would change in yourself? And I'm sure your little daughter has told you about that. Yes, that question would have been really hard. I know. Until you said my little daughter have told me about, yeah. told me about it already, mm -hmm. which is true. Hmm. That uh, she said I should be more fierce, more fierce, more, more fierce, okay, more direct and more sort of uh, to to speak my mind. Um, I am a little bit too a little bit too concerned about you know other people's feelings. Uh, hmm. Hmm. So she actually wrote out that as management advice for me. Fantastic. And she said she she also said that her mother is too too fierce and she's too <laughs> gentle. I'm sure when both both the two most important women in your life hear this conversation, I'm not sure who will win, but I think I know who will. So, oh yeah, yes. children always win. Yes. But, but so my next question, to you, Royce, is I've got time for two more questions for you. Oh, what is the most outrageous thing you have done in your life? That's a hard one. Legally or any. <laughs> Anything that you can talk about on an open show? Most outrageous thing is probably actually the picture you see behind. Yeah. So we sort of we went out and built a a one a one megawatt output electric mm -hmm. supercar with a carbon chassis and four motors, and that picture was taken. Mm -hmm. we were testing it uh, without a bodywork. Mm. And we pulled on zero to 100 uh, acceleration and a little bit over two seconds. Wow. Of, uh, sort of a, a, a something built in our garage, right? Wow. So it's, wow. I think that's something that I'm, I'm quite proud of. Well. And is that, is that you driving the car? Yeah, that's me driving. Incredible. So zero to 100 in just over two seconds. Yes, our goal is to be, be 1.9, but we're not quite there yet. Tire being limitation. And... Okay, terrific. And my last question to you, come back to the pandemic, mm. which is affecting all of us around the world. Yes. How are you rethinking your life in a new world order? I'm actually quite accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. I think the world, actually, right, it's, it's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, how we live our life uh, 30 years ago is very different from how we do it now. And then uh, COVID being one thing, I mean, one, it's, uh, it's actually because of international travel is uh, more difficult and more prohibited. It's, uh, it's, I'm really thinking about how we do our business and how we uh, look at different sort of, um, how we, Imagine living abroad, living somewhere else as well. Right. So, uh, but at the same time, I actually feel that we are even more connected with other parts of the world. Correct. Through virtual communication, mm -hmm. what we're doing now. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I expect to reach out more, but same put more and actually reach out more. Wonderful. Royce, thank, thank you so much. Question. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for opening your heart out and speaking so honestly. And I wish all your businesses and your passion lots of success. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, your question, you have 
great questions that actually made me think about a lot of things differently. Mm-hmm. Again, I, I'm constantly learning from you. <laughs> well, so it's been my pleasure and, and my honor. And it's always mutual. I'm learning so much. When I visited your, your office, all the incredible stuff you're doing, I came back with so much of a wow factor. I said, look at the stuff Royce is doing. Amazing. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.